Hello, Cancer viewers. As most of you know, I was out in Washington trying to find the soulmate I've been channeling recently. Um, but I am back in California now, back home. So ready to get into some readings. I'm going to look into what your person's feeling, thinking, whatever the cards want to say, and also get some specific messages from your person. So let's start with the connection. What do you need to know right now? Or what do you need to know in general in your life right now? I'm hearing that some of you are going through a psychic awakening in not to be afraid. Your spirit guides want you to know like it is like you're not going crazy. It, you know, it, it's just something that happens. It's part of the process. Basically, what I'm getting for this group is just trust the process. I feel like there's a lot of life changes that have just come in or are about to come in for you. And it's just kind of saying like it might be hard to understand right now, but just try to let things flow. So we have sex, seduction, uh, chaser, chasey, power struggle, cold, guarded, distrusting. Willpower, strength, and confidence. Spying. Okay, someone's spying on you. Shyness, fear of rejection. Dreams, visions, telepathic communication, choosing their words wisely, planning their approach. Okay. I feel like this is somebody that's watching you right now and they want to come in. They kind of feel like you're above them is the energy that I'm getting from this. Let me straighten this out for you guys. Here we go. I feel like there's a couple different messages here. For some of you, I feel like you really work this person up sexually. Like they have these sexual fantasies about you and they kind of just try to play it cool. Like they, they try to not let you know how strong they're feeling. It's like a, almost like a power struggle between you guys. Like they, they're kind of guarded, a little bit distrusting. And I think that they're going through a perception shift where they felt it was like it was pride it was ego it was this power struggle where they they wanted to have the upper hand they probably had very strong feelings for you but they just didn't want you to know that they wanted you to chase them meanwhile you were kind of waiting for them to chase you so you're both just sort of at this standstill and i feel like pride maybe on both ends is what sabotaged this connection in the past um i feel like their perspective has changed though. And I feel like they're more intuitive and they're more open than they were before. I feel like when you knew this person, you saw the good in them. Like you saw what was deep down. You saw the potential that was there, but you knew that they were out of touch with their true self. You knew that they weren't at their best. They were not at, you know, embracing their full potential, but it feels like now they are. It feels like something's happened. That's made them have this perspective shift. Maybe they've gone through a loss, um, something of that nature. I just get the sense that in the past they felt like being cold and kind of guarded and questioning people and being distrusting and, you know, having this power struggle, just all the, you know, ego games. They thought that was the way to be. They thought that that was what strength is. And now through this, this rebirth and this awakening they're going through, they're starting to realize, you know, what true strength means, what true confidence mean, means, what, you know, true willpower means. And, and so they're changing and now they're spying. They still have a little bit too much pride to reach out. Um, and for some of you, this could be you. So I think there's three different variations of this for this energy group, actually. For, um, for some of you, this is actually you. You're going through this and you're going through this psychic awakening. Um, and you guys could also be mirroring each other. It's possible that you're, this is your twin flame or this is at least a soulmate and you guys are going through the same things at the same time. Um, one other slight variation of this for this energy group is I feel like this could have been someone or could be someone that's just very, very turned on by you. And they're almost like embarrassed, like they don't know how to talk to you, like they think you're really attractive and they get kind of shy and flustered around you. 
But um, but yeah, where they're at now is I kind of feel like they're spying. I feel like they're a little bit afraid of rejection. They're kind of shy. They're not sure how to come in. Um, but there was a lot going on behind the scenes. So you might be getting kind of impatient with this connection because you're like, I'm tired of this person having so much pride. I'm tired. It's like you feel them about to reach out and then they just don't. And I feel like it's kind of starting to confuse you. And it's because you're, you're channeling them. You're telepathically picking up on their intentions. Like they are wanting to reach out. They're dreaming about you. They're thinking about messaging. And so you're feeling that. And then I think sometimes you go to sleep and you think like, oh, I bet in the morning they'll have messaged. And then it's like, you don't get the message and you get kind of confused. Um, but I think it's just because you're so psychically connected to this person that you can feel their desires and their, their intentions and the sexual energy as well from them. But, um, but where they're at right now is, is yeah, they're just, they're spying on you. They might be asking mutual friends about you. Um, I feel like they're, they're just shy. They're afraid of rejection. They might've taken a long time to get it together. And now that they're going through this awakening, they're kind of seeing this energy from a new perspective. They're like, damn, I should have been more open, more vulnerable. I should have put my pride aside. I shouldn't, they were so afraid of getting rejected that it's like they either rejected you first or they just pushed you away or they just, you know, thought, um, it wasn't real. Like it was just a game. The universe was playing with them. Like, it, you know, you couldn't have really loved them. Um, and now they're just, they're looking back on things and realizing that they were in the wrong. Um, but it's like, now there's a lot of fear there, you know, like now that they're being more vulnerable, there's still a lot of fear. So, so yeah, there's a lot going on behind the scenes, you know, dreams, visions, telepathic communication. That's probably part of your frustration is because you feel this person so strongly and you know that they feel you, you know, that they're channeling you, but you just can't quite put your finger on it. You're like, why do they not message? You know, well, because you know, the soul is different than the mind, like what they're consciously doing and what their soul wants them to do is it's two different things. Does that make sense? But it seems like they are planning an approach. Um, they are, you know, they're choosing their words wisely. It's possible that maybe a lot of time has passed and they kind of know, I feel like they feel like kind of a douchebag, um, male or female, either way. I just feel like they're kind of looking back on this connection and they're like, wow, I could have been the pursuer. I could have been more open, more vulnerable. I could have it's like they just play these stupid games or they made it seem like it was just sexual and really there was like a deep connection there, but they tried to just just not let you know how they felt. And they're feeling really stupid for that now. Like their soul has kind of screamed at them and woke them up and now they're just, they feel bad. They feel a lot of guilt. They feel stupid for being in that energy, for not seeing what was right in front of them when they had it. Um, so now they're choosing their words wisely. They're planning their approach. They're trying to figure out if, you know, you would give them another chance, how to come back around. The pride is still an issue for them, to be honest, but it's not quite as bad as it was. But this is a process. I mean, this person's going through some kind of like rebirth, psychic awakening. So, I mean, that that is a process. Um, and if you'd like a paid private reading, just send me an email. My email is right below in the description box below this video. My email is dragonenchantress at awol.com, but yeah, you can just copy and paste it from the description box. Okay, how are you feeling about this person? And also, like I said, some of you are mirroring this energy, so it's like you're both going through a psychic awakening at the same time. So I just want to say don't don't be afraid. Just trust the process. I know that that kind of energy is scary. I feel like there's a lot of life changes that are taking place for you right now or they're about to come in. Um, there's just, I feel like June is going to be a really um, a significant month for you and like both good and bad ways. It's just, it's going to be an emotional month for you. I don't, I don't see a lot of stagnant energy this month. I feel like there's going to be points when you feel stagnant and you feel kind of like a little bit like, you know, where's my blessings, what's going on, but there's going to be a lot of movement at the same time. I don't know if that makes sense. It's like, it's going to be stagnant, but then there's going to be like these little twists and, and turns that come up in these little, like even like miracles, possibly, um, good news, just, just things it's like the 
it's almost like you've been pushed out of stagnant energy more and more. And this is like the final breakthrough with the stagnant energy. Does that make sense? It's almost like maybe you've been stagnant for a while. And in June, there's like little tiny remnants of the stagnant energy. Like there's still some part of you that's some part of your mind, your ego that's wanting to go back to the old ways to, you know, what you're comfortable with. Um, but your soul is pushing through that and basically saying, no, we're going down this new path. It's like, you're going down this new path, whether you like it or not, is kind of what your spirit guides are saying. Um, so it's like, yeah, the remnants of the stagnation are being pushed out. I hope that makes sense. It's like, um, you, you know, you might be trying to hold on to your old life just a little bit. Like most of you is letting it go, but there's that part of you that's like, oh, that was comfortable. Like, wait, I don't know if I'm ready for all these changes, but it's like, no one's ever ready for big changes. No one's ever really ready to meet the love of their life. No one's ready to, um, to start their own business. You know what I mean? Those things just happen. It's like, I mean, you can plan for it and you should plan for it. I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but you know, life just happens. You can't always predict those things. You can meet the love of your life tomorrow at the gas station. And it's like, you, you can't control it. You can't predict it. You can't, it, it, it sucks and it's frustrating, but it's not always on your timeline. Sometimes it's even earlier than you anticipated um, or later, you know, it, it's, it's, there's, there's a lot that comes into play, um, especially the other person's free will as well. So, so just keep that in mind, you know, that you might, you're going to get some surprises this month is basically what I'm getting. This is going to be a really interesting month for you. Um, yeah. But yeah, with the psychic awakening, if, if, you know, you're, you're one of the people that's going through that, just, just uh, be patient with yourself. Just be patient, you know. And like I said, you're probably mirroring your person with that energy. And it's just a process. It's just keep letting go of the stagnant energy and keep um, going towards this new life, you know. It's like just the final breakthrough, the final, you know what I mean? Like the, not like the, not a battle. I wouldn't say it's like a battle, but it's like there's just some emotional tests that you're going to be coming through this month is what I'm feeling to really – show yourself and show your spirit guides how committed you are to this new life. Because like I said, there's some small part of you that's still scared and still wants to hold on to the comfortable. But the majority of you wants this new life, wants this new start, wants this new career, new energy, like you're ready for this. You're, you know what I mean? So just keep letting go of the people that are holding you back, the situations, the stagnant energy, keep doing cut and clear work. Um, uncrossing, just clearing that energy out and allowing this new energy into your life and keep stepping out of your comfort zone. You know, um, there's going to be moments when you're going to get scared, but, but yeah, just keep it up. So any, um, any more messages about this energy? Yeah, someone's shy because they miscommunicated or they got angry. It's like, yeah, there was a power struggle in the past. It's just kind of reiterating this energy. Tr the truth is coming out, truth and clarity. This person might have also been under a lot of financial stress is what I'm feeling. They might have been really focused on their career. So they might have been kind of, um, I don't want to say like douchey, but it's like they had a lot on their plate. And maybe you guys just miscommunicated because of all the stuff they had going on. But yeah, now it feels like they're spying on you. It feels like they're they're noticing you. It's almost like someone could be like someone you were friends with that you liked and like they didn't see your worth before, but now they do. Or it's like someone like like a like a neighbor or like a, someone you see at the store or something of that sort. Someone that you like you really were into. And it's like they were kind of into you. Like they were into you too, but like they they were really, they, they had, a, they didn't have a balance between ego and spirit. They, they might've just gotten out of something bad. So maybe they were kind of defensive just with people around them in general, like maybe focused on finances, just focused on materialism, afraid to show their true feelings. It's like, it's like a lot of pride. It feels like they're, it feels like they're very damaged. Like they were really afraid to be, they they felt like you would reject them or you'd push them away. There was just some kind of miscommunication. And I feel like this truth is going to come out where you're going to realize you guys were actually on the same page, but you, it's like the right person, but maybe the wrong timing. And now this person's spying on you and they're noticing, you know, your beauty, your mystery, and your enchantment, these things about you that they didn't notice before. They're finally understanding it. 
they might have been being manipulated by a third party or some like a family member that's mentally unstable and that might be where their fear of commitment kind of stemmed from like they were afraid of going through that because i'm getting that energy like they were afraid of going through that kind of trauma again they were afraid of being um talked down to or physically or mentally abused again you know there's they're doing a lot of they've done a lot of shadow work i feel like over the last six months or so i feel like they've also had a lot of life changes um and yeah someone that was just unstable was kind of it's like, look at this person. It's almost like they're hiding from this person, male or female. It's like they're like afraid of this person. This person that's very, look at this person. This person's very dark. This person's very toxic. This person's very manipulative, uh, deceptive, you know, a liar, a thief, that kind of energy. And it's like, you know, they had this fear of commitment because of that, because they just didn't want to go through that trauma again. They didn't want to, they had these like triggers, almost like PTSD kind of triggers. And so they kind of hid from this. But I feel like they've, they're, they're moving through that. And that could have been what was going on with them too, when you guys knew each other. And so maybe they tried to make it just sexual or like they, they, it was starting to get emotional and they tried to pretend like it wasn't, but they knew deep down they actually did want something. They did want to give you this love off or this commitment, but they were still damaged by, um, by an ex, by someone from the past that was manipulating them and, you know, possibly breaking their heart, making them sad, making them feel insecure, making them feel like they didn't deserve love. Like, you know, yeah, they could have sex, but like they couldn't have true love. They couldn't have someone so beautiful as you. Um, where are they at now with this energy? Make your move green light. So I feel like they've come a long way since then. I mean, not that the da damage is ever just completely gone, but I feel like they're they're realizing that they were projecting their issues with their ex onto you and onto other people that wanted to date them. Does that make sense? Like they're kind of recognizing that you're not the enemy. You're not the one that wanted to hurt them. Like that was, it wasn't your fault. It was their ex that was messing with them. You know, they're, they're recognizing that their happiness, their warmth, their light, it's with you. They're, they're seeing the, the light they're, They have this burst of clarity. Now they're recognizing this connection. They're wanting to come forward. Finally. Um, I feel like, I feel like the third party has ended whatever this was, but I feel like the damage is still there, but it feels like it's healing more and more every day. It does feel like they've done shadow work. It feels like they used to be very insecure, and now it feels like they're, um, like there's still like the shyness, there's still a fear of rejection, but it's not as strong as it used to be. So they've kind of wrapped their head. Cause I feel like in the past, they felt like you were too good for them. Like this ex really did a number on them. So I feel like in the past, they felt like you were too beautiful, too smart, too caring to this, like, you know, and it could be that their ex kind of told them that to try to gaslight them into staying with them. You know, the ex might've said like, oh, you couldn't, you could never be with someone better than me. Like I'm the only one that's going to love you. And it's stuck in their head. And so they felt like you were just above them. And now I feel like they're looking back and they're realizing that there was miscommunication between you two and you can love them. Like you did love them. You did want them for them. Like they just didn't, it's like they questioned it. You know what I mean? Like they knew that you, they thought you had feelings, but they questioned it. Like, what if, like, what if you just want their money or what if you just want a place to live or what if you just, um, you know, like their kid and that's why, you, you know, you want to be like a mother or a father and that's why you like them. You know what I mean? Like just stupid stuff like that where it's like they sabotaged it. They came up with every reason why you couldn't possibly love them for them. And now they're realizing how stupid that was. And I mean, not to not to put them down, but it's just like they're, they're just realizing how distorted their perception was, I should say, because of what this toxic ex did to them. And so now they're looking back and they're like, oh, wow, this person actually did want me. This person actually was genuine and I sabotaged it. I questioned them. I pushed them away because I was afraid of being triggered. I was afraid of being rejected. I was afraid of showing myself. I was afraid of um, letting go of the familiar, letting go of the pain and allowing myself to just be happy. And now it's like they've healed more. And like I said, there is still some fear there, but it's not as bad as it was. It's not... Um, 
their 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 third eye is there's a lot going on behind the scenes with this connection more so in the phys, more more so than the physical it's, it's mostly like a spiritual kind of psychic connection where it's like they're still doing some shadow work um it really feels like it it does feel like they they've had had these epiphanies though like they do realize that you guys were on the same page i feel like maybe just a lot of time has gone by so they're not sure what to say or like they just kind of know that they messed up. They feel there's something about like feeling stupid. Like there's something about them being like um, introspective and kind of thinking about what they said to you or what they did or or just like your connection or just, you know, ways they mess things up. And they just feel stupid. Like they feel like they should have seen it should have been obvious to them how you felt about them or it should have been obvious to them that you were not out to get them, that you weren't trying to hurt them. Like it should there's just miscommunication and they're finally realizing that. They're finally realizing that and they're wanting to make this move. There's still this, this kind of shyness and fear, but it feels like they are um, moving past this toxic energy. Yeah. Cause they were cold guarded, distressing for a long time. And now they're finally having the courage and assertiveness to move forward. So it, it's a process, but it is a really beautiful energy. They're, um, they're first, they had to have the courage first to just get out of this toxic energy, you know, cause it's like, they were trying to be, I mean, you, you were trying, not, not that it was your fault, like, of course, because you, when you love someone, you love them. But in the past, when you guys were around each other, they had not healed from the ex. Now, either they still loved the ex, or they were still traumatized by the ex, by, like, physical or mental abuse. And so you were kind of trying to push for them to be vulnerable and receptive, which makes sense. It's like you want your person to be that way. But they they weren't ready for that. They were still in this toxic energy. They were still kind of confused. So it's almost like it scared them even more because it was just too much too soon. Like it was just they weren't they were still in this other energy. But now it's like they've done what you were trying to push them to do. They've just done themselves. They've just done this this, this healing, the shadow work themselves because you guys have kind of gone down separate paths. Um, but you're still like connected. You're still psychic, you're, you know, you're still telepathically communicating with each other, but it's like, they found the courage on their own, you know, the assertiveness with you kind of supporting them telepathically in the background. Um, they found their own motivation to, to move forward, to get out of this toxic situation, to let go of this person, to heal from this energy. And now they're being genuinely vulnerable. They're being genuinely receptive because they're actually genuinely ready for that. Does that make sense? Yeah, because they were codependent with an ex in the past, and now they had to choose a path. Like, do they want to be vulnerable and happy and have the courage to send you this message, or do they want to stay in this codependent energy forever? Yeah, this hidden truth is coming out. I feel like you might be getting a message about their feelings as well. I don't think you're even expecting it, but you might be getting you might be getting a confession of feelings. They are because they are still scared. Don't get me wrong. There is a shyness that I feel. And like I said, unfortunately, I do feel like a lot of this is going on like in the 5D, like telepathically, you guys are communicating, which makes things a little bit complicated. I mean, not complicated, but it's like it's frustrating because it's like you want like the physical connection. You want to hear from them. And it's like they are dreaming about you. You know, they might be hearing like ringing in their ears or they're, they're they're feeling your energy they're channeling you, but, um, they're still working up the courage and trying to figure out what to say to you. But it does feel like a hidden truth is coming out. And I feel like their spiritual awakening is going to get stronger and stronger every day. I'm waiting for you to give me a clear opening. I don't know how you feel. I want clarity and certainty before I reach out. So yeah, I mean, like I said, the extra number on them. So even though they've healed a lot from that, it's, it's a process. It's, it's, they were really abused mentally or physically by the ex. So it's not something that's just going to go away. Even if they've been apart from them for a few months or so, like there's still damage to heal from that. They've done, they've come a long way from where they were when they were with that person or when they first left, like they're, they're not in that dark energy anymore, but there's just still like these, you know, le this leftover trauma. I mean, it doesn't like PTSD, for example, if that's, you know, what some of them might have, um, and, you know, full disclaimer, I can't diagnose any mental illness or anything like that. But like, let's just say, for example, some of them have PTSD. It's like that doesn't go away. You know what I mean? Like over time, the triggers might get less severe because it's like it's been a long time since they've been in that situation. But it's like it never really just goes away. It's still something that they are trying to work through and trying to figure out. You know, it's still something that traumatized them. Um, 
So it's like they know now that you love them, like they actually understand that you did want them. And that wasn't just a game or a joke from the universe, like you actually did care. Um, but they're still kind of worried, I think, just because of like the time that went by or maybe they chose this other person over you. And they're like, what was I thinking? Like in the moment it was familiar. They were convinced by this person that, you know, no one would ever love them other than them. Um, for some of them, the karmic for some of them, they might have been ready to leave the karmic. This could have happened with, you know, a few of you in the past where they were actually ready to leave the karmic and they told the karmic that and the karmic was like, oh, you're going for her or you're going for him. Like they're they're out of your league. They're too beautiful, too handsome, too intelligent for you. They're not going to love you. I'm the only one that's going to want you like some like they just put them down so much that your person lost their willpower to even leave. Not that that's an excuse, but I'm just saying that might have been the situation for some of them. Like you thought you guys were about to have this new start and out of nowhere, it's like, oh, bam, never mind. They're staying with the karmic. It's like, I think the karmic did what they needed to do to keep their person. And it, inevitably it ended anyway. I don't feel like they're with... For this group, I don't feel like they're with the karmic anymore. I think it's I think it's over. I don't even know if you know it's over, but I feel like it is. I mean, the emotions are over at least because I'm not I'm not picking up any connect, any romantic connection there at least. Um, my guides constantly remind me of you. I can't escape the synchronicity. Your name comes up in conversation. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Asking friends about you for some of you like wanted to know where you're at. Um, synchronicities, psychic awakenings. I'm working hard to remove the obstacles that are keeping us apart. I regret letting you go. I never should have left. A lot of regrets and a lot of guilt for this person. You're so empathetic, kind, and thoughtful. It's inspiring me to open up to you. I was afraid of how quickly I was falling in love with you, so I ran away. I had a huge epiphany. Yeah, they were trapped in a stagnant, unhappy situation. They were drained and distracted. I almost feel like they were in like a relationship with a psychic vampire and maybe they didn't get it. It's like maybe they were so drained that it's like they didn't understand just how toxic this person was for them. And maybe they like went on vacation or traveled and they came back and they're like, oh my God, I've been away from this person for a week and I feel so different. And they're like, they, something clicked and they're like, I can't do this anymore. And they left. Some of them might have had to get custody of a kid or something like that. My feelings for you are stronger than I let on. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they had those real feelings for you before, but they didn't want to let you know. I'm afraid you'll never forgive me. I'm afraid you moved on by now. Yeah. A lot of them are afraid because it's been a while since they've talked to you. You're so different than anyone I've ever met. You've helped me become a better person. So you're really supporting and helping this person, um, you know, telepathically. There's no one like you. I realize now I will not be able to find a love like ours with someone else. Yeah, childish energy karmics kept you guys apart. Family or friends might have also played a family or friend that was toxic might have separated you guys as well. I communicate with you through songs and movies. So look through tele look for um certain movies and songs that you're drawn to right now for telepathic messages from your person. I want to ask you out, but I'm afraid you'll say no. That would be awkward. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of where they're at right now. They, they, they might be, some of them might be sending a message. Let me know if you guys get that message. Let me know, um, if that comes through. Cause I know for these energy groups that I channel, sometimes I feel like I'm like either ahead of the energy group or I'm kind of behind. So I want to make sure I'm like right where you guys are at here. Um, so I'm just wondering if this energy has come through yet for you. Um, but anyway, like I said, if you want a private reading, my email is below and any donations are appreciated, even just a dollar. Um, most of my donations now are going to be going to going back to uh, Washington in July to try to find my person that I've been channeling. So um, and please subscribe if it resonates. I appreciate you guys. Thanks.